Nestled in the picturesque landscape of Austria, just outside Vienna, lies the enchanting Heiligenkreuz Abbey, with a long history of deep spirituality. Well, this is the inner courtyard. These buildings go back to the year 1640. Father Elred Maria is taking us on a tour of the Cistercian Monastery, where the first thing you notice are the beautiful bells. That's a carillon, so what the Germans call a glockenspiel. This is a three and a half octave carillon, so you're able to play different melodies. So when the people come here, they don't see this only as an historical monument. It should be a motivation for the prayer. As you wander around the ancient monastery, you can't help but admire the beauty and the incredible craftsmanship. We have this column in honor of the Blessed Trinity. The oldest part of this courtyard and of the monastery is this abbey church, which goes back to the 12th century. It was built in the Romanesque style, and one of its hallmarks is that it's very, very bare. For the past 13 years, the abbot of the monastery has been the Reverend Maximilian Heim, who tells us a bit about the incredible and varied history of this spiritual place. We have had ups and downs. In the beginning, there was certainly very rapid growth. Then, throughout history, there have been some big setbacks here, especially in 1683, when the Janissaries, the Turks, were on the outskirts of Vienna and, one could say, threatened the West. We actually experienced some tremendous destruction in the monastery. Here. The monks fled in 1683 and, thank God, we were able to come back and rebuild the monastery. And in the 20th century, we were a smaller community, which then shrank again, especially after the Second World War, because quite a few confreers, especially those who were not priests, died in the war. The whole lay brotherhood at the Abbey had come to an end. But in the 1960s and 70s, much restoration work was carried out and the monastery started to flourish again. Inside the churches where Father Elred Maria, along with his fellow Cistercian monks, celebrate mass and sing the divine office daily. And that's our workshop. That's where we sing the divine office. These are our big choir books. The greatest act of praise is the daily mass, of course. Our mass, our community mass, which we call the conventual mass, is celebrated at 6.30 in the morning at the high altar here. All the old Cistercian monasteries had the three great windows as a symbol of the Blessed Trinity. While the interior of the church may be austere, the sacristy is anything but. The great sacristy, which is built in the Rococo style, isn't it amazing that the style of the church is so minimalistic and bare and That's barren, right, yes. and then in here it is so rich and elaborate. So elaborate, yes. It's meant to reflect in a very dim way the glory of heaven. From the boiler to the water taps, beauty is everywhere. But despite the beauty, the reality of life in a monastery is not always easy. Some people enter the monastery and think they've come to a paradise. Well, they very soon discover that they haven't. It's hard work. It's hard work and people are very human. And you don't really leave the world behind you. You do in some ways, but you carry, you bring yourself with all your faults into the life. But the light shines through, illuminating the lives of the monks within. The stained glass windows are very, very old. 
and when we knew that the Ottomans were coming, the windows were removed and they were hidden in Vienna in a cellar for hundreds of years. Then they were brought back here in the 19th century. I These think. very windows. These very windows. Isn't yes. that incredible? In another part of the monastery is the all-important chapter house. This is where the life of every monk begins, because this is where on the 14th of August every year, the eve of Our Lady's Assumption, the novices are clothed in their habits and receive their new names. Do you remember what it was like for you? Well, it was rather nerve-wracking, actually. There, the sacred tetragrammaton, the unutterable name of the Almighty, in Hebrew letters. Isn't it amazing, Father, that we're in the room where it all begins for you? Yes. And just next door is the room where... Where it all ends. Where it all That's ends. That's right, yes, side yes. Side by side. Yes, yes. But right next door from where they enter the Abbey is where they will eventually leave, the mortuary chapel. When you die, your coffin is brought into this chapel for one day and one night, and every half hour during the day, the monks pray here for the repose of your soul, and the holy sacrifice is offered at that altar. It's situated right in the centre of the Abbey, a constant reminder for the monks of their mortality, which is why their days of prayer and sacrifice are not dedicated to this life, but to the next life. As Austria becomes less and less religious, the members of this community are not phased. They have survived through incredible moments of brutal history. And being so close to Vienna, Abbot Maximilian believes that the future survival of Heiligenkreuz Abbey will mean innovating while staying true to tradition. We are we are actually kind of an island here, a place that is a spiritual lighthouse shining into the big city. I think it's very important that people know that we are not cut off from the world, but we do not want to become secularized by the world. I believe that secularization is the biggest problem in the church today. We can be an oasis, a place where people can come and really draw from the deep sources of tradition here, but also the spiritual life that is very much alive. And each day comes to an end here in the Abbey with the Abbot's final prayer, said in Latin. May the Almighty Lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. In Austria, Colum Flynn, EWTN News in depth.